right, in this video we are going to look again at transformations of functions. Here we'll be a little bit more general. In the past we've looked specifically at absolute value functions. So let's just look at any function we want to. So begin by typing in a function of your choice. So corresponding to today's video, there's a document called toolkit functions, and that contains a lot of common functions. So linear, quadratic, cubic, uh, rational, a couple different examples there. So pick one of those. I'm going to choose uh, our base graph of just a nice quadratic function because who doesn't love a good quadratic? And I'd like to just make sure we feel comfortable taking the quadratic on the screen and shifting it left, shifting it right, uh, shifting it down, shifting it up, reflecting it across the x-axis, making it more narrow, making it wider. I know that sounds like a lot, but hopefully if some of what we did with absolute values still sticks, we can apply that here. So we can make our changes general or we can make them specific. What I mean by that is if I take the function and type in a value like plus h inside the parentheses, oops, there we go, we know from our work with absolute values what h should be doing, right? Because h is within um, the parentheses, it's going to cause a horizontal shift, so left-right kind of motion. But let me go ahead and add that slider. And just like we've done in the past, we can just look at that one change for a wide variety of values of h. So I'm going to show the base graph always in blue throughout today's video. And then the new graph will show in another color. So for our horizontal shift, it's showing in green. And then let's go ahead and play H. Desmos is so cool that you can let these values fluctuate and take a peek at what happened. So as H changes, the shift right increases as H increases. Uh, when H is positive, the shift is left of the base curve. When h is negative, the shift is right of the base curve. So feel free to follow along in Desmos, open desmos.com, go to the calculator, and you can type in the same things I have so that you can control it a little bit more to investigate any questions you might have. But let's again be thorough about this and add some notes. So let's see, I can say uh, horizontal, oops. Horizontal shift, what we just did there, which is left right. Okay, so that's what H does. Uh, it's typical to refer to H as the horizontal shift. And then we saw that to get a vertical shift, it's typical to use a value K. I'll go ahead and make a quick note that we're going to get a vertical shift to happen now. So that means up down kind of motion. And to do that, I'll just take my base graph and add k on the outside. And I'll make k a slider so that again we can let k fluctuate. I'll zoom out a little bit because k is defaulted between negative 10 and 10. You can change that. And let's go ahead and let that play. So when k is negative, the graph shifts down. <clears throat> when k is positive, the graph shifts up. The general shape of the graph is maintained. Cool. Now, you can let changes occur in both H and K simultaneously, and this is where it gets a little crazy. So up until this point, I've kept those changes isolated. We either moved left and right or we moved up and down. Let's just, let's just go crazy and... Um, have a combination of horizontal and vertical shifts. So to make that happen, I'm going to type in a new function using both H and K. I already have K as slider, so I don't need to re-enter those. But all I'm going to do is hit play on both H and K simultaneously. Let's make this guy in orange so it's easy to distinguish from the blue graph. And hold on, here we go. Woo. 
that is exciting, right? So now it's a combination of left, right, and up, down. So it's, it's harder to track when both are occurring at one time. Each of our base graphs has a good characteristic that we can look at if we ever get confused about transformation. So I know it's extremely fun to watch this graph bounce around the screen, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop our sliders and pick a couple specific values for H and K and then just talk about it a little bit with you guys. I went ahead and fixed H at negative three and K at positive two. Now, I didn't have to tell you that, the graph will actually tell you that same information. So here's what I mean by that. On the base graph, which is shown in blue, I'll zoom back in, we can tell a very clear point on that base graph would be the origin, right? Zero, zero is actually the vertex of the base graph. So I'm just gonna highlight a couple points that I look at. And then um, take your pick, maybe I'll go with another point like um, one, one is really easy to tell on the base graph. And then negative one, negative, negative one, one. So I'm just picking a couple clear points from the base graph real quick. And what I'm talking about now is a little bit geared more towards when you have to graph for yourself, what technique could you use? So if somebody's asked me to graph a quadratic function that has been shifted to the right by three and up by two, the orange graph is what I would be shooting for. And what I literally do is I take a couple key points from the base graph and make them do that motion. So what I mean by that is I need this point at the vertex, this point at zero, zero, to move right by three and up by two. So its new home becomes three comma two. I would plot that as my vertex for my new graph. And I'll do another video where I don't do it on Desmos to make it a little bit more clear. Similarly, I would take the point on either side of the vertex and move those. So I'll take negative one, one and move it one, two, three to the right. So the new X coordinate is positive two. And then I'll march that guy up by two. So it's new ordered pair would be two comma three. Two comma three. And that's the transformation just of that point. So I guess what I'm talking through with you guys is kind of a point by point transformation to create the sketch of the new graph, which is kind of cool. I've got one more. Um, so I've got this point one, one on the original, just like all other points on this entire curve, it's marching three to the right and two up to give a new coordinate of four comma three. So I would then have those three orange points on my piece of paper and connecting them, I would get the graph of what Desmos is showing already for us in orange. So that's pretty cool. Using base graphs is a powerful way to graph transformations of functions. And I hope it's something you'll consider doing rather than just starting from scratch with the transformation. So the other thing we mentioned is just this idea of reflecting and making narrow or wider. And it turns out that although it sounds complicated, it's just one value that controls all of that. So we should look at that together uh, as maybe a next point. So hopefully this is helping out a little bit as we think about transformation. So I'm gonna turn off the orange graph and focus on what we just said, the idea of reflecting and making narrower or wider. Sometimes people use words like compressing or stretching the graph. Okay, so all I gotta do with my base function here, we're dealing still with x squared, is I wanna throw a coefficient out front of the function. So I'm gonna let a be a slider, and let's make it a different color to make our lives a little easier. I guess I'll go for purple, I know it's a little similar to blue. And here we go, let's let a do its work. I'll make it a dash line to help it be a little different from the blue. So there goes A, A is changing wildly. And what in the world is it doing? When A is positive, it makes that graph more narrow. 
um, I have to be careful. When a is positive but greater than 1, it makes the graph more narrow. When a is positive but less than 1, it makes the graph wider. When a is negative, it's definitely reflecting the graph. And depending upon the size of that negative, it's either reflected and narrower or reflected and wider. And you can see the different values of a that cause those changes. So typically, horizontal motion, left, right, vertical motion, up, down, those are fairly straightforward in terms of creating a, a transformed graph for yourself. Stretching, compressing, reflecting can be a little harder, but we'll keep working on them. So hopefully that gets some ideas started about transformations. I will share the same decimal sheet with you guys so you can play around too.